What's up boys, Log Loopers here, and today we're going to be talking about 10 tips that I wish I knew when I started playing Diablo 4. Okay, so number one is the advanced tooltip compare. Now, if you look at some of my legendaries, you'll see that there is a number that is in brackets. This basically is the range in which stats can roll, which is really helpful to know. To do this, you just go into your settings and then go to gameplay, turn on advanced tooltip compare, and you will be able to see the ranges yourself. Okay, tip number two is that sellers are actually pretty decent. They are small, really fast, tightly mob packed areas in which you can get XP very quick compared to the time spent doing it. Sellers also have a super rare chance of spawning a butcher in there which is a guaranteed legendary and of course there's the ultra rare one where you get loot goblins which is really cool. It's definitely worth checking out sellers if you do run across them. Tip number three, if you imprint an aspect onto a piece of gear, you can no longer extract it from the piece of gear that you put it on. This really caught me off guard low level because I, I put a god roll berserk ripping on a low level amulet thinking that I would just be able to recycle that aspect, but as you can see, I cannot and I did lose a max roll berserk gripping so yeah make sure that if you get a really good roll you actually put it on a good piece of gear and not some low level piece of trash like me all right number four is a big one try and save every gem that you find gems are really useful for socketing into your gear especially high-end pieces of gear as they do give a surprisingly high stat bump any low level gems that you collect, you can take to the jeweler and upgrade into the higher level gem, which basically means it's just efficient to just keep all of your gems as you can progressively get more and more high tier gems without actually finding the high tier gems. Very important to do and I highly recommend you save all of your gems. Tip number five, your stash and all of your currencies and resources are saved across your account. Now I'm unsure if this is going to be the same in the season, however on the Eternal Realm your stash is account wide as well as your gold, your obols and your blood shards. As you can see my stash was on my Barbarian, I logged over to my Necromancer and my stash and gold etc are exactly the same. Very handy, it means you can transfer gear across to your alts, very cool. Okay, number six, Nightmare Dungeon tiers scale with the world tier base level and not your own level. So I was under the impression for quite a while that if I was level 60 and I did a tier 1 Nightmare Dungeon, the enemies would be level 61. However, that is not the case and they're actually going to be level 54 because the base level for world tier 3 is 53. So if you want efficient XP and you want all of the monsters to be three levels higher than you, you have to be constantly upping your tier. For example, I'm level 64. In order for me to get enemies efficient, they need to be level 67. So I need to be doing tier 14 dungeons. Just a little tidbit in case you didn't know. And it actually helped me out quite a lot. It saved me running a bunch of tier ones. Number seven, side quests are actually pretty fast. Now I don't have any footage of me doing side quests because I still hate side quests with a passion. That's what happens when you've done over 5,000 quests in World of Warcraft. But yes, yeah, side quests are surprisingly mostly pretty quick. And so they are actually really efficient for if you're doing Renown. If you do see a side quest, it's probably a good idea to do it, but I don't because I'm a lazy piece of shit, but that's just how it goes. The next two tips we are talking about obols. So obols are a little like RNG gear buying randomized thing which basically you just spend currency on a gear slot and you get gear. Now did you know that the gold bars that appear around a gear slot indicate that you have a higher chance of getting better loot when you buy this category? I didn't know this for quite a while until my, like I found out and it really helped. So if you're looking for a specific piece of gear that you want to spend your obols on, make sure you pick the gold category as that will give you a higher chance in legendaries. And if you're extremely lucky, 
I've heard it is possible to get uniques from obols. Next up we have obol farming. Now the fastest way in order to get obols, to my knowledge, is just by doing world events. There's some cool little rotations that you can do where you use the Nightmare Dungeon reset glitch and then you farm a cellar, go out, do an event, go back into the cellar, go back out, the event is respawned. And if it's a really fast way to farm obols. If you guys want a guide on this, let me know. I'll happily make one. But yeah, it's just a really good way to get obols in order to target farm specific gear. The final thing that I wish I knew when I started playing Diablo is that the level requirement isn't everything when it comes to gear when you're leveling sort of 1 to 50 or 1 to 45 then yeah the level requirement is good to know because you you should be replacing your gear like every 5 to 10 levels however when you reach world tier 3 the level requirement for gear kind of becomes irrelevant and it's all about the item power as you can see this sword that i have equipped on my barbarian only requires item level 50 or level requirement 50 however the power is absurdly high and after getting to level 64 i still haven't found a sword that does higher dps so basically just check the item power once you're in world tier 3 as that will actually be more beneficial to you rather than going for the uh, stats okay guys that wraps it up that's 10 tips that i wish i knew when i started playing diablo 4 if you enjoyed the video Give it a like if you want to see more content like this, please give me a sub and take it easy as always, have a good one.